I wasn't a good one. I had an alcohol father and a pill active mother. My mother, I'm 36, my mother has never told me she loved me. She, um, her and my father always took turns beating on me and everything like that. I'm the only child that they had physically, mentally, and my father had sexually abused. It's driving me insane Silence rattles in my brain Yeah, I gotta get away Always waiting for the fall So I build my tablet store Wandering through these empty halls Break the cycle now What's up, AML family? Good morning, good morning, good evening, good night. Wherever you are in this world, you know, greetings to you. My name is Jamie. Jamie, how you doing this morning, Jamie? I'm all right. How is your morning going so far? It's all right. It's okay. Well, thank God for life. You're alive. It could always be worse. There's people all over, all over fighting for their life right now, right? Right. So thank God we got our life. Where are you originally from, Jamie? I'm from um, Oxford Circle. How old are you? 36. Wow, Jamie is a very young young lady. Still got a long life ahead of her. So Jamie, let's, you know, let's do a little throwback. Can mm -hmm. you take us with you and paint us a picture of your childhood growing up? I uh, wasn't a good one. I had an alcohol father and a pill active mother. My mother, I'm 36, my mother has never told me she loved me. She, um, her and my father always took turns beating on me and everything like that. I'm the only child that they had physically, mentally, and my father had sexually abused. Wow, I'm so sorry, Jamie, that's horrible. Yeah, well, they, well I'm 36, so they've been together for 37 years, but like, they're, I'm the only child they abuse, so my brothers don't understand why I have such hatred for them. Well, because mom and dad are so terrific to them, and there must be something wrong with me, because they're just perfect in their eyes. Were there any drugs in your household? Not that I know. Well, yeah, my mom, well, prescription drugs, but my mom has perks. Okay. And my dad um, drinks. Bad. Wow. I hear another Damon train coming again. Well, this is early in the morning. <laughs> early in the morning. She's right about that. Uh, it gets to the point where I, I'm not even like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like don't pay attention no more. I've been out here right? since I was 19, 20 years old, and that that shit ain't on. How was it back then? To present. Honestly, it was a lot better back then. Now I think it was a little bit more dangerous because the one time I was in the potato factory, um, I just shot up some coke, and when I shoot up coke, I geek out. So you got to shut up, be quiet, you can't do nothing, you can't even move. I go, what you doing? What's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, this, I remember this guy came up to this girl now, it was, it was dark. And I remember the guy saying, bitch, if you don't give me a couple units of that dope, this is when heroin was still heroin, mm -hmm. not this fentanyl shit. Right. Um, and she said, fuck you, you might as well kill me. This, all of a sudden, all you see is this big boulder, like cinder block thing, just came over this girl's head and just watched the snap. Oh and I sat there and I put myself already back going, well, maybe if I don't move, <laughs> he's not going to notice me. And he turned around took the shit right out of, her, out of her arm and walked away. Wow. So I think it's a little, it's, I don't, and not only that, girls back then had more respect for themselves back then. And they took a lot more care of themselves. That's why, you know, I still, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm part of the old school, so I still dress, you know, nice and everything. That's good, that's good. Um, yeah, nobody looks out for each other no more. There was, uh, nobody, uh, back then, nobody, nobody let nobody get sick. If I, if I ate, you ate from the same plate. Nowadays, these girls sell you out for half a rock. 
You know what I mean? Instead of all, you know, a lot of hating going out here now. Um, people, like, these girls don't give a fuck. I mean, there's no way that I should sit next to you and smell your, smell you. Because, you know, you smell yourself before anybody. Mm -hmm. like, these girls, these, these, these girls, I don't, I don't even fuck with nobody. I don't fuck with nobody no more. Mm -hmm. I say to myself, and, like, it got to the point where they thought I was not only an ATM machine, but a cigarette dispenser and a grocery store. You're absolutely right. That's how it goes out here. And a lot of people only want to be your friends because of what they can get from, from you. From you. Yep. And that's the reality of Kensington, guys. And we know, you know, addiction plays a big part in that and makes people selfish. Another Damon train it coming again. It just seemed since fentanyl hit, nobody gives a fuck anymore. And honestly, I never seen Kensington this dirty, this disgusting ever. Um, but uh, honestly, my opinion, everyone can have their own opinion on this. It's pretty much, I think it's the community's fault. And now all of a sudden they want to give a F about their community. Well, maybe you should have did that 15, 15, 16 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, when we had them bandos or somewhere to go, Kensington did not look like this. Now they want to sit there and call L&I and be smart asses and stuff like that. And it's just like, I just don't understand. Like, you should have done that years ago. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I can maybe, in 15 years, maybe count maybe two, two crackheads or two dope fiends that, that, that actually start a fire by accident. If anything, all the, all the neighborhood fires have been from the so-called normal people. Wow. Definitely, you know, enlightening us about, you know, exactly what goes on out here because you, your eyes definitely have seen a lot. So, Jamie, before we go any further, mm -hmm. do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Honestly, I really don't remember a lot of my childhood. Gotcha. Um, a therapist told me it could have been because of the tra tra uh, trauma happened when mm -hmm. I was younger and what your brain does is try to help uh, forget about it. Right. I don't remember a lot. I don't remember a lot of shit. I'd be looking at photos. I'm like, they'd be, they'd be like, do you remember that? Do you remember that? I'm like, nope. Hmm. I don't remember nothing. Let's go in high school. So in high school, what type of student were you? Um, before I went to high school, I was, an a, I was an A student. Honor roll and everything. I got to Lincoln High School and forget about it. I totally rebelled. Like, I was a rebel. Hmm. I hung out with the guys. I hung out with the jocks. I hung out, I hung out with everybody. Um... Wow, wow. I planned to meet my oldest son's father. He was 23 when I met him. I was 14. Mm. And like three months after my 15th birthday, I got pregnant. And a month before I turned 16, I had my oldest son. He'll be 21 in June. Mm. He don't even look like I have, <laughs> I have a 20 year old. I, I, was, I, was, I was popular. Um, it was weird. I ended up becoming a bully myself when I got to high school. Mm. Um, I was I was I was bullied from uh, fifth to eighth grade until I had enough and I had to I had, like she when she put her hands on me I just mm -hmm. blacked out and just beat the shit out of this girl. And gotcha. I still remember that little bitch's name. <laughs> Don't remember much from a child, but I remember that little bitch's name. <laughs> I hear that. What? Well, why? You know? Why was she bullying you? Uh, I hate to put it as a race thing, but. Mm -hmm. She was a black girl, and, and a lot of the black guys talked to me, and mm -hmm. it's just... It is what it is. You're keeping it 100, you know? I understand how it goes. Hey, when I used to walk down, all my kids are mixed. Mm -hmm. So when I walked down the street with my kids, I, I, a lot of them would say shit to me. Right. Say shit to my kids. I'm like, well, my kids are kids. Like, stop. Like, my kids got it both from the blacks and from the whites, you know, mm -hmm. grief. Hey, black woman on hate. It is what it is, you know, it's it vice versa, the, the other way around, too, so. I, I'm, I don't some, envy none. Mm, I'm, I'm cool with who I am. Exactly, that's, that's what I it mean, granted, about. yeah, I am doing what I'm doing. I, don't, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Okay, I got you. So now, Jamie, let's get right into it. Remember, this is no judgment. Any mm -hmm. questions you feel uncomfortable with answering, you can always say skip, okay? Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, nothing is forced over here. Right. So now, currently, what drugs are you struggling with? 
Um, I've been fucking with meth. Meth. When and I first started off, I started off with um, with prescription pills. I was in a, I was in a car accident in 0405, and my mother being a cunt she is, she, she, my insurance company was telling me I needed to pay this and that, and I wasn't getting no notification she was throwing my shit out. So they ended up cutting me off instead of me getting weaned off like I was supposed to off the perks. Well, no, I was on Oxy 80s, the real Oxy 80s at the time. Mm. So, um, I got, that's the first time I ever experienced about some, you know, that opiate uh, withdrawal. Right. So I'm like, what the F is wrong with me? But as soon as I took a, t- took a pill, I was cool. So I, you know, ended up figuring out, oh, well, I need this to be okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as you come down Somerset, one side was the blacks and one side was the whites. <laughs> But I would go to the black guys to get the uh, uh, the Oxy 80s because they would sell it to me for uh, for 30. It would usually be 40 a pill, but they would sell it to me for 30. Mm-hmm. But I would buy a lot. And my ex fiance at the time, he was doing heroin, the real heroin. And uh, he turned around to me. He goes, you know, all that money you spent $30 for uh, you know a pill when you could just buy a $10 bag of this and you'd be all right. Mm. So I said, fuck it, let me try it. I was like, an opiate, it's an opiate, right? Mm. So I started doing heroin. Within a week, I was shooting it. And I was fucking around with that for five years. Found out I was pregnant with my youngest. I said, fuck this. I said, let me get my shit right. So I got my shit together. I was clean for four and a half years, came back out here. I'm not going to get into why mm-hmm. into with that. But um, true. I sat there, I said, damn, you know what, what can I fuck with, because I don't want to fuck with the dope, because I don't want to sit there and be sick, mm-hmm. and plus my body can't handle the fentanyl, because I remember in 2010, when they came out with uh, China White, I think it was called, which had the, which was the fentanyl, yeah. and that's when they started doing half fentanyl and half dope, and I used, to go to, for, I used to go to Argyle, and last time I did their dope, they had Pelican, now that tells you how long ago that was, it was like 10, 11 years ago, so I haven't touched heroin in that, in that long. I came back out here, I ran into my friend Joanne Smith, and I was like, wow, you know, what What do you think I can do? That And she goes, well, smoke some fucking crack. I said, uh, well, how do you do that? <laughs> and, yeah, that's when she uh, introduced me to uh, my friend Sax, and, you know, yeah. I would chill over there with them. Wow, such a testimony. What was your experience like the first time you tried dope? I threw up, I kept throwing up a lot. And I'm like, what, I was like, what the fuck what am I throwing up for? This ain't fun. Yeah. And then, uh, but I will say though, it got me, uh, it got me uh, well quicker than, than uh, waiting for the pill to uh, right. kick in. Mm-hmm. And then when I stopped getting sick, like I fell in love with the high. And like when I had to leave it alone, and when I gave it up, you would think I broke up with heroin. Like it was crazy. It's like, it like I was in a whole relationship with it. And like I cried, and like for the four and a half years, I was such a bitch. And when I went to NA, they were like, "Well, why are you such a fucking bitch?" I said, "Cause I can't get fucking high anymore, motherfuckers." <laughs> so yeah. So what do you, what do you like about it? Well, I like I, don't, I like the way it made me feel. Um, and now I did nod, but not how they nod. Like pure when you do pure opiates, it, it makes you speed. And then, now when you crash, that's when you're, yeah. But other than that, like this weeble wobbling shit, yeah, I, it's embarrassing. Like one, one, one friend, she kept dipping out, and I, let, I would leave her where she, well, I don't want to say friend, I would say associate. I would just leave her where she's at. I told everybody, I'm like, I wobble down the street, you stole that weeble wobble shit, I'm gone. That's embarrassing. It's bad enough, I got people looking at me because I jump in and out of cars. I don't need to walk down the street with you and, you know, hear more bullshit. So now, what is your second drug of choice after? Then I started fucking with the crack. Now, I was a crack monster. Oh, my God, was I a crack monster. I always had a bundle and a half to two bundles of crack on me. If I got down to a bundle, I panicked. I needed more money for more crack. <laughs> uh, well, what's the downside of using crack? The Joan thing, Joan like, like having a crack attack, like that's real. <laughs> what does that feel like? A crack attack. Just, it's really, really, just really want to hit, and you don't give a fuck how you get it. That's why I always thought crack was a little bit more worse than dope. Cause I would sit there and I have a habit, like when I used to do my heroin, 
I would do my two bags and I was cool. I was cool for hours. That's why I like the meth. I do a shot and I'm cool for hours. Crack, I gotta keep smoking that shit. I gotta sit there and do this and be out there more and, and you know, and do what I gotta do and yeah, I always thought crack was worse. So what type of effect, you know, did you get when you use meth? How does that make you feel? Well, there's, uh, I don't want to get into that one. <laughs> you know, we, we just want to educate people who never I understand, it, but, but I don't want to get okay, into that Okay, I hear one. you. All right, so now, what aspect of using drugs that you're not happy about? Uh, like with the crack, like I said, the Jones and the heroin, the sickness. Meth, I um, really haven't found a problem with that yet. Like, I mean, I, I know that's harsh to say, and I'm not telling, uh, I mean, like I said, I, I wouldn't wish this on nobody. Like, you know, but I mean, I really haven't found really, I guess when I can't find a work, I guess, I, I guess that would be, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, like right, right now, like I just started really fucking with it heavy. So, I mean, um, and I have no desire for crack, I have no desire for dope, nothing. Um, I don't drink no more, no nothing. And it feels like, um, I have to start, like once it runs my court, like it has run out of my course. <laughs> it's coming. I know. I heard it. I heard it in the distance, but you didn't. So Jamie, now you know this road that you're walking down. What's ahead of you? What are they saying? Hey, jails, institutions, and death. I've been to jails, I've been to institutions. What's next? Are you afraid of dying? If it, honestly, if it's my time, it's my time. Out here, I've been beaten, raped, robbed, everything you can think of that happened to me out here. That's when a lot of people threaten me, I'm gonna do this. And I'm like, I've been out here for almost 15, 16 years. What do you, uh, what have you, what could you do to me that has already been, uh, that has not already been done to me out here? Wow. I said, the only person I fear is God himself. Hmm. So you were clean before you said four years mm -hmm. how was your life like when you were when you was clean it was all right i mean i, w I went back to school um i uh you know i uh, was a nurse for a little while i worked at temple for a little bit um i had two houses um i had a couple cars nice seems like you had you know you, you was living a normal life right right do you miss that? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah, I can't be a nurse anymore because I'm a felon. Yeah, well, there's other profession you can get into. Another Damon train passing. <laughs> okay, so now, Jamie, out here in Kensington, you know, you... I know, obviously, th these drugs is costing you a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> you should. How do you get the money to support your habit? <laughs> um, prostitution and um, I used to sell for my boy. That's how I used to do it. Got you, got you. You know, we're not here to shame because we know the lifestyle, that's what comes with it. Usually, yeah. The majority of the girls, that's what they resort to doing. And the guys that do have the girlfriends depend on the girls to go out there to make now, the money. I think. That is revolting. I'm, I'm like great. that. Like he. I'm like he. I, I hate when a man just. Like I can see if she's hustling and he's hustling. Mm -hmm. And you both bring something to the table. Right. But for you to sit there and actually wait on your girl to do what she has to do, and then you demand like demand shit from her. Yeah. Like who the fuck is you? She just. She. she didn't, when we jump in on them cars, we don't know if we're coming back. Absolutely not. The thing is though, I knew the Kensington Strangler. Can you tell us about the Kensington Strangler? Um, it, it was, his name's An uh, Antonio Rodriguez, um, but they called him Black because he really is Black, but he was adopted by Puerto Ricans, so you know that's why we call him Black. Um, he used to be my coke dealer, and uh, he, and I would never thought that of him. Um, he would let me come to his house, sleep, wash my clothes, make sure I got a shower, eat everything. Like, and from from when I looked in the paper and they said that was him, I was like, holy shit! I ran down the, uh, the hallway because me and my friend Melissa we were both pregnant at Instrum House West and uh, that's a mother, mother and baby program and uh, I banged on her door. I'm like, yo, Black's on the f Black is the Kennedy's trailer. 
The thing is, though, I'm thinking God might have put me away from Kensington at that time because if he would have told me to come here, I would have just came over because I knew him. Yeah. Wow. I can only imagine. You know, he's trying to say he's innocent. No, you're not. You did it. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. Well, at least he got caught and he's paying for his crime. But what I didn't like was how the news put up a false face. Everyone's sitting there looking for a Spanish man when they should have been looking for a, you know, a black man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hear you. And two more girls died because of that shit. Thank God the one girl, killed, like, you know, faked her death. Mm. How were you introduced to this whole dating lifestyle? Who introduced you to this game? Um, different girls. Different uh, girls. I would watch what they would do, and they. Uh, I can't remember her name. Her name was Sue. Yeah. And she taught me a lot. Hmm. Have I, haven't I haven't seen her. I don't know if she died or she got her shit together. I hope she got her shit together. Right. Well, I hope so too. Do you think prostitution should be legalized? Yeah, I feel it's my pussy. I should be able to do what I want with it. And uh, what? So if he took me to a dinner and a movie and I fucked him, that's okay. So uh, he wants his dick stuck or he wants whatever he wants. Okay, I'm going to give it to you, but you're going to have to give me money. So what's the difference of taking me out to dinner and a movie and just give me the money? Fuck all that dumb shit. Give me the money. Do what you got to do. See you later. Hey. Well, because Uncle Sam's not my fucking pimp. Huh. Hey, guys, that's Jamie. She keep it 100. She's <laughs> unfiltered. I like that. What has been your worst dating experience, Jamie? Mm. I never really had that much of a bad one. But like a lot, like the one I would say it was like would be a liar about the money. And that's why I always got paid up front. Facts. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Always get paid up front. If they don't want to give you the money, then I roll out. Have you ever been incarcerated for doing that? Well, could have violations, that's why. Uh, right now, that's why I like the new DA, Larry Krasner. He's not prosecuting that shit. Mm. He said there's too much going on in his city for him to even worry about something like that. So yeah. small petty cases, he's not, he's throwing out. And you know, <laughs> the one voice officer turned around to me, I said, I said, do you all get the fuck off? Like, I snapped on them. They're, they're like, uh, what, do you, what do you fucking say to me? Well, if you don't like it, go to Nevada. It's legal there. Hmm. I said, nah, I don't want Uncle Sam as my pimp. Huh. What's the most amount of money you ever made doing that? Um, this guy ended up giving me $500 for less than a five minute blowjob. Wow, $500. And I was surprised. Gotcha, gotcha. Have you? I thought you know, I kept looking back to make sure you wanted to call me to rob the pack for me and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I kept right. pulling out my mace and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, you ain't getting this money back, right? <coughs> Hell oh, no. Nah. Right. And you said you were good. See ya. Right. Wouldn't want to be you. He had a lot of money on him. I'm surprised no one robbed him. Mm. He showed me all this fucking money. I was like, oh shit. Wow. Hey. <laughs> well, he's lucky you didn't set him up. To get robbed. I don't do that. I wouldn't want that. Because so, that happened out here a lot. But it does. Women does that. Have you had any good dating experience? A best, a best dating experience? Um, it started like he's still my friend to this day. Um, like I can call him up and, and, and tell him I need a couple dollars, and he'll just give it to me. Like or or if I need someone to talk to, I can just talk to him. Yeah. Um, he taught me a lot too. But um, uh, what the fuck I was saying um. Just I home. hate that. The meth fucks my head up. I hate you. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, like, I'm glad I met met him. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, he taught me a lot and he was always there for me. Right. You know, granted, I'm not around as much as I, I, I was down here. But, you know, that's still, that's all my best friend. Now, mm -hmm. out here in Kensington, what's 24 hours look like for Jamie? Um... Well, lately I found somewhere to uh, uh, put my head at night, so um, I'm not out here as much. Um, so um, I would, uh, I guess, like, lately I've been sleeping, Sleep. eating, go out for like an hour or two, come back with my shit, mm -hmm. chill out for the next couple hours, and then, yeah. Repeat the cycle, right? Right. What's the most 
how much you spend daily on your drug use? Average, what you say? I say a little bit cheaper with the meth, actually. How much you pay for meth? I would say a hundred a day. And is it five dollars for one? You can get it from Nick's. You can get them dimes. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer the dimes because there's a lot more in it. Damon train coming. Again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How do you protect yourself out here, girl? Honestly, I think it's because I know someone that's big out here. And I think if it wasn't for him, because my mouth is very vicious. <laughs> very vicious. And uh, I just feel like all these years I've been out here, there's no one that, that defends me except for this one person. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Um, oh, that's nice of him. You got somebody yeah, I who think got your back. Because had the influence he has out here. Mm hmm Nobody gonna mess with mm, you, right? Right. Oh, that's good. Cause people definitely <laughs> take advantage of the women out here. Just definitely. yesterday, I saw a guy walking with a girl, and the next thing I just saw his hands just punched in her, in her eye, and I heard it. Pah! I was like, poor girl. You know, and she was with him. The addiction. You know, I, I could tell he treats that girl really horrible. It, it, it broke my heart, but I couldn't really say nothing because you know you be the bad guy. Me. Yeah, but it really I don't get the message. Yeah, it was sad. I don't like to see you know women getting treated like that. So let's um move forward, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some horror stories that you have seen or heard about out here in Kensington? Well, I told you a couple of them um, okay, yeah, with yeah, the potato factory. Yeah. All right, and so before yeah. they knocked that down, they found over 60 dead bodies in there. And on the railroad, they found like over 100. Wow. So, Jamie, let's do a, a mm -hmm. scale thing, you know, from zero to 100, mm -hmm. where zero is. Okay, Jamie is not ready at all. She's going to be in this black hole for a while. And 10 is Jamie is ready to get the hell out this black hole and get back into the light. What number are you on that scale? You said zero being not ready at all. I'm not ready. I'm and not. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat shit. I'm not gonna you? tell everybody. Oh well, Jamie's gonna go to a rehab tomorrow. No, Jamie's not ready yet. What number would you give on that scale, zero to a hundred? Zero. Why not? Why not one percent? Because I know I'm not ready, and I'm not gonna psych myself out for a disappointment. But, um, like I told Palumbo, that, that was my old judge. Mm -hmm. um, I turned around to him and I said, don't send me to another rehab, because I'm going to leave. He's like, well, I just want to, you know, Palumbo wanted to help, because his niece died out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? He wanted to help. Okay. And I get it. I get it. But the thing is, though, yeah, I've completed all the rehab you sent me to, but I never stayed clean, but I'm not ready. I can't do it for my kids, my grandmother, my sister, my brother, uh, the guy across the street there, my kids. You got to want to do it for you because you got to deal with you at all times. So. Absolutely. And I'm not ready yet. I'm just not ready yet. Gotcha, gotcha. So, is it that drugs are so important that you won't give it up no matter the cost? No, I'm just masking my pain with the meds. I'm self-medicating, pretty much. But you know what they say, right? than, I know. You're what? only creating your own problems, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I know. I've been to N.A. before, I know. <laughs> the pain. Numbing the pain. And the thing is, though, a lot of the cliches from N.A. is really true. It only yeah. works if you work it, all that other mm -hmm. not, you know, nonsense. It, it, well, even though I say nonsense, it's really not. It, it really does apply to everyday life. Like It really does. So, Jamie, what type of person would you like to be? I would be more nicer, more kinder, more humbler. Yeah, it's our environment sometimes changes. When I had my four and a half years clean, I came out here and helped. You know what I mean? I, I, I talked to the people. Um, I did save about, uh, you know, three girls' lives by, you know, telling them my story. Yeah. And, you know, their, I had their mother come up and thank me and all that other shit. One girl, I talked her into going home. And she was all right for three months and then she came back down here, relapsed and died. Wow. Damn. And that's, 
That's exactly how it goes out here, unfortunately. It's not easy. See, with, with, with fentanyl, you know, you, you, you've done that bag 50 million times. But the next bag you get, you could die. Yeah. And, you know, everyone knows the rest of it. And honestly, and I'm really sick of these fucking men, grown-ass men and grown-ass women fucking bitching and crying about being sick and this and that. Well, you did it yourself. You have no one to blame but your fucking self. You keep being mad at nobody out here but yourself. You can be mad at the dealers who they told you no to a front. You can't be mad, uh... At Tom, Dick, and Harry because they didn't give you enough money. You did it to yourself. Back to back trains. You did it to yourself. That's what Jamie said. You can't blame nobody but yourself. What about those people who, you know, it's a lot of mental illness out here, Jamie. Oh yeah, I know. There's a girl down the street that's a fucking fruitcake. Yeah, we're gonna get off topics just to mm -hmm. get to know you as a person, okay, Jamie? And mm -hmm. then we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have any short-term goals for yourself? No. Not at all? No. What about long-term goals? Absolutely not. I really don't plan my days. I go with the flow. Go with the flow. Gotcha, gotcha. What is one thing that you love most about yourself? That no matter what, I try to stay true and uh, to myself and uh, I don't know, like uh, no, um, I try to be honest mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I want, and a lot of people out here hate me for how honest I am. And it's really, well, why would you ask me for my honest opinion when you really don't want it and you know I don't sugarcoat shit? I hear that. You know? Jamie, we would like to know what's your so zodiac sign. Leo. Yo, shout out to all the Leos. <laughs> Show your girl Jamie some love. We out there. What are some of your favorite foods? I love pizza. I like pizza rolls. I like egg rolls. Uh, I know there's a whole jail thing right here, though, but I love my Swiss rolls. Hmm. Love them, love them, love them. Got you. And I'm off that. the Pepsi kick now. I'm on, on Canada Dry Time. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? I listen to NWA a lot. Um, I, like, uh, I listen to old shit like Usher, Shanti, yeah. Buster Rhymes. Okay, Jamie got some, you know, she got some old school flavor mm -hmm. in her collection. I could definitely listen to her playlist. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Hmm. I like cats and dogs. I know you said one, but I like both of them. That's cool, yeah. You know, I, like, you... I like dogs because they're very loyal. Mm -hmm. Very loyal. Especially when you get a rescue dog. Um, years ago when I lived on Atlantic and Jasper, um, I seen this guy every day walking his dog, and she was always so skinny, and she always like was shiver like. And I turned around, and I said, "Yo, I'll give you four rocks for that dog." He gave me to her. And we named said, her name was Soraya, and I thought that was too serious for a dog, so we named her Bella. That was my baby. You would th yeah, that was my baby. And, and within a month, we had her fat as shit. <laughs> 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 but she transformed into like, from like being not confident about it, like you know, being like defeated. Till like she was so confident and she would bite your motherfucking head off if you touch me. <laughs> Don't play <laughs> around, huh? One of those dogs. Not when it comes to me. Jamie, we would like to know what is your favorite holiday? Halloween. Why? Get to dress up. I noticed that's a lot of people's favorite holiday, Halloween. <laughs> you can tell me the night before Christmas? Okay, I've definitely <laughs> got to show you a test. What talents do you have? I like to write poetry. Oh, beautiful. You know, on this channel, I always encourage, you know, talent mm -hmm. and I try to inspire people and get to get the AML family to support your work. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can give us a couple lines of? We would love to hear no, it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm putting on the spot. So maybe one day. Maybe one can, day. <laughs> one, yeah, guys, we have to make this happen for her. One day I'll get her to bring her poetry book and we can sit her down. She can read some of her beautiful poetry because we would love to hear it, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Real talk. I'm really interested in that. want to know what's on the mind of Jamie. 
when you're alone sometimes what are some things that go through your mind hmm I don't know, I try to keep myself occupied, so I'm not in my head too much. Okay, I got Whether you. Whether I'm in games on my phone, or I'm writing, or I read a book, I'm well, sorry. No, we're almost done, girl, we got like five minutes. What's your favorite color? Purple, because it's royalty, and green for money. Got that right. I saw people, <laughs> when people say their favorite color is green, I ask them, is it because of money? Because <laughs> yeah. I know how it goes. Right. Do you have a favorite TV show? Mm. I love The Big Bang Theory. I love Sheldon. I think he's hilarious. Yeah, that's, that is a good one. So, Jamie, if you won the lottery today, what will you do? I'll probably be dead motherfucker. <laughs> That's why I said, thank God I was never rich or a rock star. I'd be dead. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I hear that. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? No idea. Like I said, I don't plan. You just I go over the floor. live day by day, huh? Yep. Are you religious? Do you have a spiritual or religious belief? No. Where do you believe you'll go when you die? Hmm, I'm probably heaven or hell. Well, I pray you go to heaven, Jamie. <laughs> you're living in hell already. Right. Can't get any worse than this, I don't think so. It can be way more, more worse than this. In Kensington? Yeah. I hear that. Yeah, you're right. You know, I've been, I've been, you know, I traveled a little bit. I've been to San Francisco. Everywhere I went, even in Hawaii, they all talked about Kensington. Mm. Skid Row, now, now Skid Row, that's scary. Yeah. But they're a lot nicer than the motherfuckers down here. <laughs> got you, got you. Jamie, are you currently in a relationship? No. What do you look for in a partner? If you can make me laugh, like really make me laugh from the belly, you got me. <laughs> you hear that, guys? If you could travel to any place or country in the world, where would you go? I'd probably go back to Hawaii. Why? Because it's definitely like paradise. Beautiful. 85 years degree, 85 degree, damn. <laughs> Me too. 85 degrees year round. Nice, right? That's beautiful. You can get high shit on the beach and everything. They have a tent city on the beach. Wow. The cops don't even fuck with them. Well, that's good you have travel and, you know, seeing some nice places, Jamie. That's amazing. Sunrise or sunset? Which person are you? Sunrise. Why? Wow. The start of a new day. Start of a new day. Jamie is a bright and early person. She likes to be up when the sun is up. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, if if you had to pick one to be invisible or to fly, which one would you pick? Fly. Why? So I can get the hell away from you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Woohoo! Jamie is on my team. We the we the birds. We like to fly. A lot of people, Jamie, ninety percent of the time they pick invisible. So, so no one can see them. Yeah, and it's sad. Jamie, if your friends and your family were supposed to see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Not a fucking thing. Okay, you heard that, guys. You heard that. Where are your kids? Two, of my mom and two are adopted in North Carolina. All right, okay. Well, at least they're being well taken care of. Do you stay in touch with them? My mother won't let me. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Jamie. Hopefully one day they'll reach out to you. I, you think, I think they will. They will, definitely, definitely. There are a lot of people out there, you know, who don't understand addiction because they can't relate. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to these people who are against addicts? I would think that you know, you have to have some type of love person that, that's addicted to something. There's something. Whether it's gambling, whether it's sex or anything like that, like uh, hoarding. You know, they, they have to know somebody and think about it. Think about it. What about if your wife was out there? What about if it was your daughter? Especially what it, guys, especially with the guys that did, are disrespectful. Now, what would you like if your daughter, you know, God forbid, came out here? You want someone talking to your daughter like that? Your mother? How about your mother? You want them telling your mother like that? 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. for real. Yeah. What about that was your daughter, your mother, or your sister? You would want to pound their fucking face in. But it's okay for you to talk shit? And nine times out of ten, the guys that are talking shit are the ones that have two, three o'clock in the morning wanting their dick sucked. Like. Hmm. Hmm, you hear that? That's it. That's real talk. So now, Jamie, if you had a message to send to the world, what would your message be? Nothing. I don't have really nothing to say. I got you, got you. Okay, guys, so that was a little interview with the lovely Jamie. She <laughs> opened up her heart and she kept it 100. And I respect that. AML family showed Jamie some love. I'm welcoming her to the family, so everybody please embrace her. And hopefully one day, Jamie can change her mind and, you know, get that four years that she had before, she can get that back and, and more. live a normal life and more, exactly, and more. And she loves to help people, so maybe she can come back also too when she do change one day mm -hmm. and help the family give back. But she's giving back right now just by sharing her story, and that's, that's, that's you know, priceless. So, Jamie, I want to tell you, thank you so much for your time. So, AML family... You know, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Drop all the comments you have for Jamie. Jamie, is there anything that you're in need of that the AML family can help you with? Resources, I'm anything? I'm all right. I'm all right for now. When I, when I need something, I'll say something. Gotta save me from myself This emptiness, it hurts like hell My good intentions let me down